Edexcel, A-Level Maths, Mechanics, Summer 2019, Question 3. Two blocks A and B of masses 2M and 3M respectively are attached to the ends of a light string. Initially A is held at rest on a fixed rough plane. The plane is inclined at angle alpha to the horizontal ground where tan alpha equals 5 twelfths. The string passes over a small smooth pulley P fixed at the top of the plane. The part of the string from A to P is parallel to a line of greater slope of the plane. And block B hangs freely below P as shown in figure one. The coefficient of friction between A and the plane is two thirds. The blocks are released from rest with a string taut and A moves up the plane. The tension in the string immediately after the blocks are released is T. The blocks are modeled as particles and the string is modeled as being inextensible. For part A, we need to show that T equals 12 mg over five. So firstly, let's label our diagram. We've got the masses of A and B as 2m and 3m. So the force due to gravity on A must be 2mg and the force due to gravity on B is 3mg. We've also got the tension in the string so we've got tension pulling A towards P and the exact same tension pulling B towards P. A is lying on a slope, so we know where there's the resultant force R. And the slope is rough, so there must be a force due to friction, which is the coefficient of friction, which we've been told is 2 thirds, times by R. It's also a good idea at this point we can work out what R is, because we've got everything we need there. The only force opposing R is that gravity on A, the 2mg, but it's going in a slightly different direction. The 2mg is vertical, whereas the R is perpendicular to the slope. So if we add this little triangle in here just to remind us, so it's a right angle triangle where 2mg is the hypotenuse. This helps us remember whether we're using cos alpha or sine alpha for our two forces. So the force opposite R is 2mg cos alpha, hence R is the opposite of this, also 2mg cos alpha. And that means the two thirds R for the friction must be four thirds mg cos alpha. Now we've labeled our diagram, we need to deal with our tan alpha. So we know that tan alpha equals five over 12. If we draw a quick right angle triangle, we can see that the opposite side must be five because that's the top of the fraction and tan equals opposite over adjacent. The adjacent side equals 12. This is a right angle triangle. So using Pythagoras, we know that the hypotenuse must be the square root of 12 squared plus five squared, which is 13. So now we can see that sine alpha equals five over 13 and cos alpha equals 12 over 13. We're now set to get into our problem. So let's look at the forces acting on A. At A, we've got the tension pulling up the slope. We've got the force due to gravity and the friction acting backwards down the slope. And we know that A is starting to move, so it's accelerating. So we can use our F equals MA formula. So the force pulling up the hill is the tension minus force due to gravity, which is 2mg sine of alpha minus the friction, which we've already worked out, is 4 thirds mg cos alpha. This is all equal to the mass of 2m times by the acceleration a. We now know that sine alpha is 5 thirteenths and cos alpha equals 12 thirteenths. So putting these in, we get that t minus 10 thirteenths mg minus 16 thirteenths mg equals 2ma, which gives us 2 minus 2mg equals 2ma. We're now going to do the same thing for b. So again, it's accelerating, so we're gonna use F equals MA. Now B is going downwards, so our resultant force is the force due to gravity, 3mg, minus the tension in the string, and this is equal to the mass of 3m times by the acceleration. Now we're aiming for a formula of T that doesn't have A in it, so we need to cancel these out somehow. One way of doing this is if we rearrange the equation we've just worked out and divide by three, we get MA, equals mg minus t over three. We can now substitute this into our final equation for a, the t minus two mg equals two ma. 
which gives us T minus 2 mg equals 2 lots of mg minus T over 3. So the right hand side is 2 mg minus 2T over 3. So adding 2T over 3 to both sides and 2 mg to both sides, we get that 5T over 3 equals 4 mg, which rearranging gives us T equals 12 mg over 5 as required. After B reaches the ground, A continues to move up the plane until it comes to rest before reaching P. For part B, we need to determine whether A will remain at rest, carefully justifying our answer. So let's look at what's happening to A. Here we have our particle A with mass 2m. We've still got our force due to gravity of 2mg and our resultant force, which we earlier worked out, is 2mg cos alpha. As we're now looking at whether A will remain at rest or start moving back down the slope again, we're going to put the friction back on, but this time we're going to have the friction going uphill, stopping A from moving down. And as we worked out earlier, that is 4 thirds mg cos alpha. So we know that the maximum friction is this 4 thirds mg cos alpha. We know that cos alpha equals 12 thirteenths, so this is 16 thirteenths mg. The force pulling A down the slope, that's just the 2mg due to gravity. Again, it's coming at an angle, so we've got 2mg sine alpha to make that force parallel to the plane. That equals 10 thirteenths mg. For part C, we need to suggest two refinements to the model that would make it more realistic. Now, there are many answers we can give for this. I went with a couple of the more simple ones. So use an extensible string instead of an inextensible string and use the weight of the string. So we were modeling with a light string, but so if we put some mass into this, that will change it round. Other possible answers, we could put some friction at the pulley. We could include air resistance. We could model the blocks with their dimensions rather than modeling them as particles. These would all change it and make it more realistic. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel to keep up to date with all the latest releases.